Hi everyone, I'm the Sneaky Danish and welcome to a new Let's Play series today we're playing Thomas Was Alone. My name is Thomas, so there might be some reasoning behind playing this particular game, I don't know. Thomas Was Alone is an indie puzzle platformer developed solely by Mike Biddle. Throughout the game we take control of several shapes characterized with unique names and personality, including the main character Thomas. Yay! The characters need to work together to get to the end of each level. The game is narrated by British filmmaker author and comedian Danny Wallace, who has written the book Yes Man, which was also made into a movie of the same name in 2008, starring Jim Carrey. Thomas Was Alone is a very atmospheric and cute little game with lots of character and I'm fairly confident that we will enjoy Thomas Was Alone together. As always there will be spoilers, but that's just how let's plays work, I guess, uh, so get your favorite beverage ready, sit back and let's get some Danish sugar going. Let's play some Thomas Was Alone. Hello, alright here we are in uh, Thomas Was Alone, today I'm having some uh, Red Bull sugar free, let me know in the comment section uh, below what you're having, let's uh, get started. Thomas wasn't special, it was just an AI in the right place at the right time. Thomas was alone. Wow. Oh. A weird first thought to have. <laughs> Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three, falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. Oh, he was yeah. He was as good at falling as he was at observing. Exactly. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to, what's the word? Jump. It worked. Thomas yeah. had solved the great inverted fall mystery. Oh yeah. We did it boys, game over. big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. Gently. <whistles> this all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. He was yeah. starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Ah. Paranoia. All right, I think we need to get to this one over here on the uh, left uh, first. No, okay. This all seemed a little well, maybe dangerous. Maybe it's for uh, achievements, I believe. To be it was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. Hmm. Ah. He was starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Holy oh, yeah. Paranoia. Shh. Ah, paranoia, yeah. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might or might not be important. <laughs> it 
might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No. Too obvious. No. That's too obvious. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water <clears throat> intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made another mental note. Four. Water. Not good. To be avoided. <laughs> the loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. had a new theory. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Yeah, all right. I submitted hundreds of bug reports. I told that idiot this would happen. Overlapping scripts. More than one AI was bound to be spawned into an environment at some point. Turns out I missed the point. That little error changed everything. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Q or E to to scroll between characters, and we need to. Yeah. Sweet. Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually. Not technically graceful. It's probably. Probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. <laughs> glowy white thing thing <laughs> only chris could get to it which of course made it all the more enticing what would it do what new opportunity might this switch open up to him Ooh. Grace, another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, 
This made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. <laughs> Was this good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happily to be on his merry little adventure. <laughs> Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. <laughs> with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from hmm. the vaulting idiot. Hey, now my wall turning idiot. Portal would split them up, if only for a few levels. Come on, Chris. His chance, a moment to shine. shine. This was game day. <laughs> oh. So simple. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? Hmm. 
Excellent. Whoops. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Of awesome. <laughs> time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. Aww. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he'd practiced in the mirror all these years. <laughs> Need uh, Thomas to help Chris. see them but I actually think it's for the achievements those uh, small dots that are on the um, screen that I just picked up we'll see about that and Chris come on Chris you can do it <clears throat> John was happy to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. <laughs> mm. Chris. And you reckon it's Chris, we are waiting for kind of. 
Oh, that we need to help. All those shadows, actually, it's... Cool little effect. so much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. <laughs> Let's see if Chris can make the jump here as well. Probably not. Oh yeah, good. was less immediately likable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John. Target. This would require coordination, balance, and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. 